welcome to this session. We will discuss Compose Past, Present and Future, from Fig to Docker Space Compose. My name is Nicolas Delof. I'm staff software engineer at Docker. You probably have many reasons to complain about me as you run some of my code. I've been contributing Ubuntu for years. As Apache Maven committer, I even wrote a book on it. I've also been a Jenkins contributor and I created a bunch of Docker related plugins. I'm also a former Docker captain, as I used to publish YouTube videos on the French spoken Quad Neuf Docker channel. On my spare time, I'm an amateur video maker and a gardener. This last picture is a bit of a gift from my son, who guessed this was my main activity based on the time spent. To start this session, let's travel back in 2013. I like to talk about this period as the starter time of Docker because the project was still fresh, new, but already very active and there were tons of community contributors proposing tools around Docker. This was the time of boot to Docker for non-Linux user, Docker machine and many others which are obsolete today. Fig was one of those community projects, trying to make Docker command line simpler. Being able to run a single container was nice, but once you had to connect containers together, share state, you ended with long lists of flags, and running them in the right order was pretty complex. By the time, many projects tried to address this need, and one of them became very popular, FIG. FIG's main benefit was it was based on a simple configuration file written in YAML, which was not so omnipresent by the time. This configuration file basically lets you write docker run flags as YAML element, so that it was simple to transpose your existing compose commands into a fig config file. In 2015, Docker was growing as a company and building his product portfolio. They adopted the most promising community contributions as official Docker project and acquired Orcard the company building fee. As you can see, Orcard was actually a very small company of two. In a sense, it was actually more an acquire action, which means Docker didn't just acquire a product. They wanted those guys to be part of the team. As Fig became an official Docker tool, it has been rebranded as Docker-Compose, you know well, while the code was the same. In 2016, Container ecosystem was switching from one container to many. Kubernetes was launched just a year before, and people discussing orchestration were mostly using Mesos. Docker Swarm, the one included in the Docker engine, was announced during DockerCon 2016. Swarm defines its own engine API and model for services, but Docker was aware of Compose popularity and wanted to promote his orchestration solution by leveraging Compose success. So the Compose v3 file was created, introducing clustering concepts in the YAML file format as replicas, placement, constraints, and so on. It's not legitimate to judge this decision with today's highs, but why this actually made Swarm a popular solution, this came with a major drawback for Compose. This shift to v3 also removed many Compose attributes which were not relevant in the cluster concept. Compose v2 allowed to fine-tune the containers to enable advanced sharing mechanism while on a cluster you can guarantee container will be scheduled on the same host. Services also is a distinct abstraction versus container which includes lifecycle management. A long debated removal in v3 file format is a depends on, which made it easy for a developer to ensure the web app container will only start once the backend database is up and running. On a cluster, services can be distributed and restarted anytime, so there is no simple solution to replicate this behavior. The reasoning behind this move was correct, but side effect for the next years is that still today. Many users consider v2 is for local development while v3 is for the cloud. Docker never expected this brain split to happen and has tried hard to promote v3. 
In 2018, Docker announced a new project next to Docker Compose, Docker Application Packages, or Docker App. This project was designed to address one of the main issues with Docker Compose. While you can share your container images through the hub, there is no simple way to share your Compose files and parameters to actually distribute an application. The project was not as successful as expected, and there have been an attempt to boost its adoption by including support for cloud native application bundle. Synab is sort of a universal installer for cloud resources so that your app can install itself on any supporting infrastructure. This actually added more complexity to the tool and didn't help to make it successful. Lack of success for Docker app, in my opinion, is caused by a major design issue. Docker app has been created as a separate tool next to Docker Compose. It comes with command to import a Docker Compose file or convert a Docker app back into a Compose file. But still, this is a new set of commands and conversion between tools, which doesn't offer a smooth adoption path. Addition of Synapse technology will, while it will allow integrating in a larger ecosystem, definitively separate the Docker app from the original Docker Compose high-level abstraction that is very developer-centric. This was the time I had been hired by Docker and had to renounce my Docker Captain title. I was in touch with many people as a captain, but then I discovered what happened inside the company. One of the motivations behind Docker App project was to leverage the Compose success to get a large user base, but without relying on the legacy Docker Compose code base. Within engineering, Compose was sort of the black sheep project with important maintenance needs and few volunteers. One of the main reasons is that Compose has grown organically, with contribution from everywhere and many behaviors are not documented, nor identified by use cases. This makes any change a dangerous action, especially with such a large user base. The other, more significant reason is that Docker Compose is written in Python, while the other Docker products are in Go. This means any change made to the Docker command line or the engine API needs to be backported to the Python code base. Compose has always been lagging behind the command line. On the other hand, Compose is still an active project which receives many feature requests or contributions. This means decisions need to be taken on the Docker command line side when someone proposes a change to the Python code base to maintain consistency between tools. During December, we had a hackathon week. During this period, engineers are free to work on the topics they choose, and by the end of the week, we demo all those to the company. This is a nice way to promote new ideas and try to bring them into actual products. On my side, I decided to create a Docker Compose alternative in Go by translating Python code into Go line by line. I learned Go as I joined Docker, so I don't have this strong opinion about code beauty that you can sometimes hear by gophers. I actually felt my somehow object-oriented Go code was nicer. But the main benefit of doing so is that it was able to guarantee I reproduce all the Compose implementation details. So by the end of the week, I ran this. Let's watch the most boring demo of the DockerCon, Compose, that just run like Compose. My homemade Docker Compose re-implementation reproduced the major Compose commands. So, for example, build, it actually relied on build kit, or up to start your application. PS command can be used to list services, you can exec inside a container. You also can pause, unpause, restart containers.
It can also run a container based on the service definition as a single task. And obviously, you can also collect logs. As you can see, it's just the same as Docker Dash Compose, just a bit faster because we don't have to initialize the Python runtime. But basically, this demonstrated we can provide a replacement for Docker Dash Compose. While Docker Compose maintenance or replacement was a challenge, Docker always have been aware of the popularity of Compose 5 for developers to define non-trivial applications. And this also comes with a challenge to do it right. So to support Compose adoption, we created an awesome list as docker slash awesome compose. This list contains many examples for various Compose applications contributed by community and have been reviewed by Docker engineers to ensure good practices. If you're not familiar with Compose or want to find the right way to connect XYZ services in your application, check this repository for reference content. Beginning of 2020, I start working on a publishing the Compose specification. The idea with this effort was to separate the Docker Compose 5 format as an open specification versus Docker Dash Compose tool which then became just an implementation. Compose specification is an open place to discuss Compose concepts and extend to new use cases. It was designed with contributions from Amazon, Microsoft, Docker Captain, and also individual contributors. You're welcome to join. Docker Compose is implementing the spec, obviously, and K compose or compose with a K, a Kubernetes tool to convert your compose file into a Kubernetes server. Also join the specification during the initial review. More recently, compose spec was adopted by NerdCTL, which is a Docker-like command line, but directly accessing container D without the need for Docker engine. Octeto, which target Kubernetes clusters, also joined the spec as an implementation and proposed to extend the spec for better support of Kubernetes concepts. By Docker, we have been working on adding support for Compose to Microsoft SCI and Amazon ECS, as so-called cloud integration. I was tech-click on the ECS integration. Let's run the demo. Both SCI and ECS integration are based on the same concept. Let's demonstrate by running a pretty simple Compose file. We start by creating a new context of type ECS. This one will just access Amazon based on my environment variables to provide credentials. Then, if I switch to this context, my Docker commands will actually target this Amazon environment. And I can run the classic docker compose up command which won't run my container locally, that so will actually create an Amazon ECS cluster and all required resources matching my Compose application definition. This obviously includes creating services, but also creating a DNS resolution between services using FlutMap, creating an Amazon log service to collect container logs, or a load balancer in front of my services so that they can be exposed for external access from the internet and traffic can be load balanced in between replicas. As you can see, deployment is significantly slower. But remember, you only type Compose Up and we created a bunch of Amazon resources to match your application. If you want to get more control on the resources being created, you can access the CloudFormation template that we created under the hood. Once the application is eventually deployed, we can use the ps command to list services and get their external URL or collect logs for the application. So that's the same Docker Compose experience applied to a cloud platform.
Compose specification was an opportunity to fix mistakes from the past and introduce new features with open discussions with the community. A major change has been the reconciliation between V2 and V3 Compose file formats. Version attribute is now optional and actually ignored. As V3 has been designed, many attributes have been removed as not relevant in a clustering concept. But they still make sense for local development. With Compose specification, all legacy Compose attributes are now part of the spec. And they are supported by Docker-Compose since 1.28. Some might expect version can guarantee portability for the Compose file, so that user is one his Compose tool is not up to date and application won't be able to start. This is actually wrong. While Docker Compose can validate your Compose file regarding the x.y version schema, being able to run the containers as defined might depend on your Linux kernel version and configuration, on the Docker Engine version, on installed engine plugins, and so on. Not to mention some Compose attributes are specific to Windows container and will just break on Linux. Compared to other software specifications like Java EE, Compose spec role is not to define a set of required features. It actually defines the Compose file attributes as the abstract intent they should be used for. Implementations might have various strategies, constraints, depending on the actual runtime. So the specification enforces that implementation when they support an attribute will behave as expected. Specification also requires implementations to warn user when some attribute is not supported so that you can validate your Compose tool can apply model on your infrastructure. Another change introduced by open discussion in the Compose specification tries to address an issue which exists since 2015. Many users use the same Compose file for distinct usages and doing so they don't want to start all services but just some backbone and a limited set of services on top depending on the usage. As a Java developer, I've been using profiles for years in Apache Maven, Spring Framework, or even Java EE. After discussions with the Compose spec contributors, we adopted a proposal to introduce profiles in the Compose file format so that one can flag some services as not started by default and get them up when some profile is enabled. Such changes can take place thanks to open discussion with community members and without focusing on a specific implementation within Docker Compose. As we were working on cloud integration, writing code to adapt Compose on SCI and ECS, we started working on a local implementation. That's a bit weird to have local support within cloud integrations, but that's the magic with choosing the wrong name in the software industry. This code became mature and we decided to promote it as a viable replacement for Docker-Compose. It's implemented as a CLI plugin, so it adds the Compose verb to the Docker command line. We had long debates to find a name for this. Compose in Go, Compose in the Docker CLI, or Docker Space Compose. We eventually made a strong decision to run this the role of official replacement for docker-compose as compose v2. The good news for you is that it's already there and have been tested by many users already. If you have docker desktop installed, you already can run docker space compose as a replacement for docker-compose. It's backward compatible and designed to offer a smooth transition between tools. We are aware many of you have created scripts around Docker Compose and we don't want you to get locked with the need to rewrite them all, even if this is just about replacing dashes with spaces. So we created a tiny wrapper which rewrites the docker-compose commands into docker space compose with docker host and context flags translated for the docker command line. Compose 2.0 is not just a rewrite in Go, it also comes with new features. We implemented a new Compose LS command to list applications. It was surprisingly missing from Docker-Compose. A Compose copy command has been requested since 2018. 
to match the same command available in the Docker command line. It's now part of Compose 2 and was contributed by a community member. Last but not least, Docker Compose does not anymore require the original Compose file to run commands, you can just pass the product name. It will retrieve project resources by labels. This is very useful in case you edited your Compose file or changed your environment variables since you started the application. While the route from Fig to Compose 2 has been a bit chaotic, Compose spec is alive and healthy. And Compose is now a first-class command in the Docker command line. It will evolve at the same speed with other Docker tools. Code can be shared between the command line and Compose to enforce homogeneous UX and behavior between commands. Please give it a try and send us feedback, either on community Slack or GitHub issues. Thanks for your attention.